Yeah, we're close in age. We both have daughters. We both uh, went to religious schools. We both started off as creationists, and uh, and then we both abandoned creationism when we realized that uh, we didn't know anything about evolution. And when you actually study it, the stuff that they tell you uh, that it is, it just isn't isn't the case. Uh, and yet, I, I went on to not not be religious anymore. I went to Pepperdine University, which is a Church of Christ, fairly conservative school, uh, and uh, and you stayed religious. Um, why did you, down, down the path of abandoning creationism and challenging your religious beliefs, why didn't you just keep going and become an agnostic or atheist or whatever? Well, there's a slippy slope, as you know, and you sort of slide off of that fundamentalist plateau down towards unbelief at the bottom, and uh, uh, you probably clawed your way as you were sliding down looking for something to grab a hold of and couldn't find anything. I guess I'm stuck on a bush partway down uh, <laughs> at, at, at the moment and, uh, you know, haven't felt the need to kind of slip all the way, uh, all the way to the bottom. See, because I'm worried. Maybe yeah. I went too far, you know, just in case. <laughs> um, and yet, uh, uh, you found wanting in the creation story what? I mean, just that it wasn't scientifically sound or that the biblical story itself was not fulfilling and or that the scientific story was more enriching for you or well i think that I, I think the way the creationists spin the creation story in genesis into this anti-evolutionary uh sort of proto-science just r robs it of everything that's interesting i mean there's so many aspects to that story that are just glossed over in the in the creationist reading I mean, there's the repeated refrain that, that God looks at the world and it's good, right? I mean, this is just, this is not scientifically interesting, so the creationists don't talk about that, but that's a very meaningful part of that story, and it's something that takes that story and distinguishes it from contemporary stories in other ancient Near Eastern religions, that, that we are not sort of stuck here in a horrible, messy existence, but rather we're stuck here in a, in a world that's meant to be wonderful, and so we can celebrate the good that we encounter as if it belongs here. Uh, we can celebrate the fact that we're created in the image of God and are not here to be oppressed by a pantheon of sinister <laughs> deities and so on. And the, these are things which just get overlooked entirely in this uh, reframing of that story to be an anti-evolutionary diatribe. And I think that Christians are kind of robbed of what's interesting in that, in that story if we get so distracted by figuring out the the genetic characteristics of the biblical kinds and the exact sequence of the events and how long the days are 